question. If I do really, really good and it hasn't been the whole 60 days yet, is there like any way I can get out before the 60 days are up? so it's required that you do stay here. Um, my guess is because you were using cocaine and that's a pretty powerful drug, so usually the higher, the more power a drug has, the less resilient the judge is. Okay. Okay, so um, do you want to go ahead and get started with, and tell me about yourself and how you ended up here? Okay. Um, well, when I graduated high school, our, uh, was in a really bad wreck and my mom and my brother ended up dying and um, I don't know after that I attended grief counseling for a while and I actually did pretty good and I actually got a scholarship to USI with softball and um, I don't know I was making good grades and everything but uh, during the second year my dad got a heart condition and I just started kind of I don't know, smoking marijuana, and my grades started failing, and then I got kicked off the softball team, but I still got to stay in school, but then, so, then I was like, well, I need to get my grades up, and I started uh, using Ritalin, and I don't know, and after that, like, everything, I didn't do any better, and um, I ended up getting kicked out of school, and I uh, started, I started using Recently, I got pulled over because I was speeding and I was like high as a kite, and they knew. So I went to court, and the judge sent me here. Wow, well, it sounds like you've had a pretty rough few years, you know, just yourself, but also your dad. You lost your mom and your brother, and you're not in school anymore. Yeah. Was softball something that you really enjoyed doing? Oh yeah. started using and everything, and it's just I couldn't even practice or focus on it anymore, so. Okay, so, you know, you, you're dealing with the loss of, you know, your favorite sport, not going back to school, and losing your mom and your brother. Um, yeah. It kind of sounds like you just went downhill from there. Um, you know, you seem to be doing really good in school, and then when your dad got sick, something triggered something. I always thought that maybe since like I lost my brother and my mom, that maybe like since he got a heart condition, like you think I'd be like really like close with him when be around him all the time, but it kind of like just like scared me to lose somebody, so I just kind of brushed him off. So you know that's usually understandable. Um, in that type of situation, when that happens, usually a person is you know they're afraid to lose. You know, your dad sounds like his your only support system that you have. So yeah. if you were to lose him, then you, know, you wouldn't really have anybody to lean on. So how is your dad doing now? Is he better? Um, he's doing okay right now. He's not doing great. Um, just okay. Okay. Well, um, while you're here, um, I think that it would be beneficial if started um, going back to grief counseling here at Sevenson. They offer um, what's called a group session grief counseling, and there they touch on like coping skills, what to do, you know, and how to cope with losing a family member or two in your case, um, you know, how to, how to deal with that without having to use. Do you think that that sounds like something you'd be interested in doing right now? sessions twice a week instead of once a week and then um, slowly ease you into a group yeah. session. Yeah, I really don't like talking in front of people so that's something I think I need to like kind of maybe ease into the oh, whole group thing. That's not a problem at all. We can go ahead and do that. Um, while you're here, is there anything 
anything else that you would like to focus on, um, talk about, or do, um, deal with while you're here? Okay, that made it.